I will tell you one of my favorite prophetic evangelism stories and help you to understand how God does a lot with our little, okay? Uh, back in the days, long, long ago, before COVID-19, <laughs> my husband and I loved to go on cruise ships. <laughs> We're very sad that we haven't been on a cruise now for a couple of years. It's very sad. Um, but we actually would do these cruises sometimes with our elders, sometimes with our team of ministers um, from Christian International. And we were on one of these cruises one time. And if you've never been on a cruise, you go in and you have dinner and then you go to some kind of entertainment, a comedian or something, you know. And so we were on the first night of the cruise. It was a five-night cruise. And we had had dinner. We were a little late getting into the theater because we were visiting. And um, so when we walked into the theater, we just kind of slipped along the back row that still had some empty seats. And, the, and there was a comedian that was up on the platform. And the second I sat down... Yeah, p part of the stage. He was up on the stage, yeah. Um, call it a stage, that's right, yeah. Uh, he was up on the stage, and he was performing, and he was funny. But the second I sat down, the Lord gave me a prophetic word for him. And I'm sitting there going, what, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> huh? Stand up and prophesy from the back. Yay! They'll sit there. Don't do that, okay? They'll just... They'll come, they'll, they'll, they'll wrap you up in one of those cozy white coats, and they'll carry you out, okay? Um, so, I mean, I didn't know what to do with it, but I just began to pray for him, and pretty soon the show was over and we were leaving. Well, as we started making our way out of the theater, here's this guy standing in the back shaking people's hands. I thought, well, let's just go for it, Okay. So it wasn't like some big, like super specific word. The Lord just, as I shook his hand, I said to him, usually it's better not to lead with the word of the Lord. It's usually because then you seem a little crazy, okay? But if you act like a person first, they might listen to what you have to say, okay? So I actually said to them, I said to him, um, thank you so much. That was wonderful entertainment, good, clean humor. Thank you for that. But then I quickly segued into... You know, while you were performing, the Lord spoke to me about you, and he told me to ask you, why are you running from the call of God? And when I said that, his head went like this, like I just struck him. And pa Pastor Tom was standing right next to me, but he leaned forward and he goes, who are you? And I said, well, we're here with a, a bunch of ministers, and, and we believe that God speaks today, and just felt like God wanted to ask you, why are you running from the, from the call of God? And he goes, oh, man. Oh, wow. <sighs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Really? <sighs> wow. And, like, there's, like, people standing behind us ready, trying to get out of the theater. Okay, so... Huh? My <laughs> Pastor Tom said maybe he was Jonah on a cruise ship, <laughs> getting ready to be thrown overboard. So I said, listen, I said, if you would like to talk to us more about this, and I, I pulled a pen out of, out of my purse and I wrote our room number. My husband was standing there. I wasn't just like giving some strange man our room number, okay? Um, I wrote our room number on his hand and I said, just give us a call sometime and we'd be happy to meet with you and pray with you. And he's like, oh man, okay, wow. Mm, okay, wow. You know, that was the whole vibe, okay? You're catching it, right? So we went on our way. Well, the next morning... On my vacation, my phone rings at 6 a.m. Did I mention I'm not a morning girl? Did I, did I tell you that already? Okay. I'm not a morning girl, but our phone rang at 6 a.m. And I answered and said, hello, hello. Now, let me just first say that if you are really, truly in need in the middle of the night, you better pray that I'm home because he never even hear. he doesn't hear babies cry or alarms go off, okay? So we were in a hotel last week, and there was a baby screaming the whole time, and he's like, babe, I don't hear it, you know? And I'm like, you never did, okay? So, okay, long-standing wounds, okay? Anyway, so <laughs> so anyway, so I answer the phone, and I say, I say, 
hello, and he says, hey, man, hey, wow. Um, I'm the guy that um, you talked to last night, and I've been up all night ever since you said that thing that you said to me, and you just messed with my head. And I just am wondering, is there a time that I could get together with you and your husband and maybe you could bring some of your minister friends too because I need a lot of help. <laughs> and so we found out what his schedule was on the ship and we found out that after the show that night he was available. So probably about 9, 30, 10 o'clock that night, there was about 10 of us that met up on a top deck and um, that night, we met with that guy. He rededicated his li life to the Lord. He had gotten saved as a child, ran away from God. Um, he rededicated his life. We got him filled with the Holy Spirit. We prayed for healing in his body. We cast out some devils, and then we prophesied to him. You know, on the cruise, you kind of get the whole meal deal. We kind of gave him the whole meal deal, okay? So the next morning, again... At 6 a.m., our phone rings, and he says, hey, man, wow, man, I've been up all night ever since y'all did whatever that thing is was that you did to me. I am so pumped. I am so excited. Listen, I have a lot of friends on this cruise ship. If I bring them to that place we were at last night, could you do to them whatever that was you did to me? And from that night forward, every single night on that cruise ship, we had revival. Come on. We didn't have music. We didn't have a pulpit. We, didn't, we just got together with whoever he brought. He brought the singers and the dancers. He brought um, the, the head of the art gallery. He brought the spa girls. We cast some really interesting demons out of them. Um, the waiters, the wait staff. I mean, it was like, like we had revival on a cruise ship. From that night forward, I don't even know how many people got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, delivered, all because of one tiny little prophetic word that took me about five seconds to give. And let's be honest, it wasn't really even that specific. Come on. Sometimes the fear shuts us down. And God's saying, we're just looking for some bold people. Because when you show up, the Lord says, I send angels down that start bringing the harvest into a place that they can hear. Angels of awakening. There's more to the dream, but I don't think I'll go into it. But I will say this, is that we hadn't even had a chance to share with uh, Prophet Greg what he had seen, but he, he said, I want us all to stand up and he said, I want us to link arms all over this place. And it's as though heaven is linking arms with us. And I was like, I had this dream. I want to tell him. <laughs> I didn't get to tell him. But I'm telling you, God, heaven wants to link arms with us. Heaven's, heaven wants to move. I'm telling you what, heaven is not locked down. And God is looking for a church that's looking for the opportunity in the midst of all of this. In 2019, the Lord gave me a prophetic word, and I, I preached it that whole year. The Lord said, I'm going to take my church out of survival into revival. See, here's where you got to understand. you got to learn to read between the lines with God. Because <laughs> we weren't really in survival in 2019. But in 2020, the enemy tried to put a lot of us in survival mentality. God was prophesying. He was saying, listen, you're going to go into a season of survival. Let me just say this. It's good to survive. The word survive means to keep going through difficult situations. It's good to survive. But if we're living in survival mode, then all we think about is us. But if we're living in revival mode, we start thinking about the harvest we start thinking about all the little babies that need to come into the Christian, into the, into the kingdom, we, to become Christians. We start thinking about other people. And I heard the Lord say when he spoke that word to me, he said, I want my people to be so rooted and grounded in me that they're, 
that they're no longer just praying survival prayers, but they've entered into a time of praying revival prayers. 